Hi and welcome to the first video of section 4, Extending the Web API. In this section we are going to cover the authentication possibilities for RESTful API. Then we will learn when should HTTP caching be used. We will continue with learning how to handle errors within a RESTful API and in the end we will cover some guidelines for building large projects with Flask. Now we move on to the first video of this section which deals with RESTful authentication. In this video we are going to take a look at why should RESTful web APIs be secured and how the securing and authentication can be resolved. Depending on the data and the type of API we are developing, all the web API calls or only a part of these needs to be secured. For example, if we develop an API for a banking software, all the requests should be authenticated and validated, so we are sure that nobody is accessing sensitive financial information. If you are developing an API for weather forecast, then most probably we do not need all the requests to be authenticated. We have four authentication mechanisms. Basic HTTP authentication sends over the wire base64 encoded user and password. Basic HTTP authentication does not encrypt data, so when using this type of communication and authentication, we should always use SSL or HTTPS as a protocol for the communication. These two protocols will give us an extra layer of security for our requests. The other authentication mechanisms will be covered in section 5, Securing Web APIs. It is a best practice to always use HTTPS or SSL for any web API. Now we will review how to add basic HTTP authentication to our web page. Authentication validates the users, verifying who they are. Authorization verifies what is the user allowed to do. We will add an authentication for the about page of our web application. First we open up the decorators.py. Here we have two functions. The validate user function simply checks if the username is John and the password is DOE123. The function returns a boolean value. The authenticate method is a wrapper method and helps to define a decorator. Below the code I listed two useful links where you can read about Python decorators. The authenticate function receives another function as parameter and using the wraps method we create a wrapper for that function. When the wrapper is created we take the authorization object from the request and we invoke the validate user method with the authorization object. If the authorization fails, then we create an HTTP 400 response and we set the www authenticate header. This HTTP header is important for the browser because based on the value of this header, the browser can decide whether to display or not a login window. If the authentication was successful, we execute the ref function passing all the parameters. Now we will check how to use the authenticate decorator. First let's open roots.py. We import the authenticate method from the decorators. If we want to use our decorator, all we need to do is to annotate the method which needs to be authenticated and we are done. Now when a new request comes in for accessing the about page, first the code in the authenticate method will be executed. Now let's see this in action. We need to start our Python application. When navigating to the about page, a login pop-up appears asking for the username and password. So the username is John and the password is DOE123. When I press the login button and if the credentials are correct, the server will return an HTTP 200 and the contents of the about page. Yeah, and this worked. Now let's examine the HTTP request. When I'm selecting the request, I need to look up the request header. Inside the request header, you can see that we have the authorization HTTP header, which specifies that we have basic HTTP authentication, and we have a value here. This value is the base64 encoded user and password. We can use Postman, the Google Chrome extension, for testing our authenticate method. So let's start up Postman, and let's set the following parameters. So we want to set up a GET request to the HTTP localhost port 5000 slash about. This is the URL of the about page. On the authorization tab, we have to select the basic auth from the dropdown. Then we have to specify the username and the password. There is a checkbox which gives us the ability to show or hide the password. Once we set the username and the password, we press the update request button. This will generate a new HTTP header for the GET request. 
we can see this header in the headers tab. The name of the new HTTP header is authorization and the value consists of two parts. First is the basic, which means that we are using basic HTTP authentication. And the second value is the base64 encoded username and password. This is the same value what we have seen in Chrome. When I press the send button, I can see that I get status 200 back from the server and the content of the about page. Now let's try to make a false request and let's say I misspelled the username. I need to update the request and the header as well has been updated. You can see the value here has been changed. Now if I press the send button from the server I get a 401 unauthorized response. Now we can be sure that our authenticate method works as expected. Great progress! In this video we covered one of the most important parts of building a good RESTful web API, which is authentication. And we learned how to keep our API safe from unwanted data sniffers.